And hello, Chugs Army. Hello, everybody. Happy Hair Down Monday. Happy start to our week. Gonna be a beautiful week. What's going on, Ophia, J-Rock, Jared, Ginny? Hello, Sharpshooter, Patty, Impactus. What's up, my friend, Unstoppable? Hello, Saris, Afoot, Ash, Jerry, Deanna, HG. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Once again, happy Hair Down Monday. Happy start to our week. Like I said, it's gonna be a great week for everyone in the Chugs Army. Uh, welcome, today is stream 712, and today is part six, and potentially the finale of Resident Evil Revelations. I feel like we're close to the end. Again, I've never beaten this game before, never played it, uh, before we played it here on stream. Uh, very much enjoying it, and potentially we are gonna beat game number 54 today, which would be really, really awesome. Um, Chugs Army, just a heads up, to drop some unfortunately news. It's not really major unfortunately news, but uh, my flight tomorrow leaves much earlier, much earlier than I originally anticipated. Uh, so today I was hoping to go at least four hours. I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's going to be closer to three, um, which is still good. Still a solid stream. And again, I'm glad I can stream today in general. It's just going to be a Really, really busy evening and then getting ready to be back on the road uh, Tuesday. So I won't be able to stream Tuesday or Wednesday. But Chugs Army, we will be back on Thursday uh, when I get home. And we'll be at the start of our five-game cycle. And we're going to continue with The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt's next-gen upgrade. But as far as today, uh, again, I think today may be the finale of Resident Evil Revelations. Which means uh, when we beat RE Revelations... The game that will be replacing that one in our cycle is, of course, Resident Evil Revelations 2. And then after that, this part of the five-game cycle is the one I know the most. After that, we are going to jump into the Silent Hill franchise, which I'm super excited about. I've never beaten a Silent Hill game. Never before. So very, very pumped about that. But once again, um, happy start to the week, everybody. We're going to kick this week off right with a hair down Monday and a great stream. Uh, and good vibes as well. Um, also, again, I do want to say, just because before this past Thursday, it had been literally two weeks since uh, I had been able to stream, which is the longest I've ever gone, I believe, without streaming uh, since I started March 30th of, of 2020. I missed you guys so much. So to everybody who's been hanging out with me Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and today, Monday, thank you so much. Mwah. You have no idea... How happy it makes me. Again, we had a great Starfield showcase on Thursday. Uh, an amazing Final Fantasy 16 stream Friday. An awesome Sekiro Shadows Die Twice stream Saturday. Uh, it's so great that we returned to The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I loved that yesterday, even though it seemed like we didn't make a ton of progress, uh, we actually got quite a few uh, tears or memories that we were uh, able to look at with some extra, extra juicy lore. Um, so I loved that. So again, thank you very much for joining me yesterday. It's great to have Tears of the Kingdom into the cycle. I'm excited to continue playing that as well. But again, very excited to potentially beat Resident Evil Revelations today. Very, very excited. Um, MTRZ, dude, the one and only Mr. Garfield Kart Furious Racing. MTRZ, thank you so much, man, for 41 months at Tier 1. Thank you, my friend. I hope you're doing great. Um, Valhalla, thank you for 19 months at Tier 1. Thank you, thank you. The Hill, thank you for the 100 RE Revelations. Bay Bay is right, potentially the finale. I don't want to say for sure, but it feels like we're close to the end. Feels like we're close to the end. What's up, Aerobat? Hello, hello. Um, Rachel, thank you for 20, oh, I'm sorry, 30 months. 30 months at Tier 1. So were you officially a Chili Beast since you went on Hot Ones? I feel like I'm officially... I feel like I should have an official Chili Beast business card at this point. I mean, I think at this point, that proved without a shadow of a doubt. A one and only Chili Beast, right here, live in the flesh. <laughs> I think so. Rachel, thank you again for 30 months at Tier 1. Um, Winter, thank you for the Prime sub, and welcome to the Chugs Army. Welcome, welcome. Silver Shark. Dude. Silver Thank you so, so, so much for 10 Tier 1 gifted subs. Silver Shark, happy start to the week, my friend. Holy moly. Silver Shark, thank you for 10 Tier 1 gifted subs, my friend. Thank you, thank you. Happy uh, happy Monday. Happy start to the week. Happy hair down Monday. J-Rock, thank you for the 100. Hey, Chugs, I hope you were well. Fun question today. 
Do you have a video game idea of your own, and what is it? Ooh, J-Rock, great question. Um, God, I, I've thought, truth be told, J-Rock, I've never thought or created in my mind like an actual story with characters. Of course, I fantasize about sequels to games and like where those stories will go. Um, but I have not thought about a video game idea of my own. That is a very, very good question. First of all, game development has got to be one of the most difficult things to do. Um, I don't even know where to begin as far as that process goes. But creatively, obviously, that could be something really, really fun to sit down and think about. I actually have thought before J-Rock of making like a RPG in RPG Maker. Um... I feel like that would be really, really cool, and, and playing through it that way, I thought about that as something to do on stream at one point. Uh, that could be super, super fun, but great question, J-Rock, but no, I, I do not have a, a story or a game idea um, in my mind, but I think it would be fun to sit down and do at some point. Uh, ja, thank you for the four months at Tier 1. Thank you, thank you. Zanzibar, thank you for the 245. I don't consider this a spoiler since it's literally the first thing that happens. Um, Silent Hill will make you fear and dread the sound of mandolin. Oh, God. Yeah. Yep. Silent Hill. So we did showcase uh, Silent Hill 1 on the PlayStation 1 on one of our anniversary streams. Um, I love that game. I played that demo so many times as a kid. Uh, so I'm excited to actually play through it. Very, very excited about it. Uh, Cliff Bar, thank you for 37 months with Twitch Prime. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Very much appreciated, Cliff. Uh, Silver, again, thank you for 10 Tier 1 gifted subs. Thank you very much. Um, hey, what's up, Kiana? Hello, hello. Tash, thank you for the 100. Chugs, happy hair down Monday. Love you making my Monday massively special. Always love for you. Oh, well, thank you, Tash. You guys make my Monday very special. Uh, Alex, thank you for six months with Twitch Prime. Oh, you're the nicest. Thank you, thank you. Survivor Girl, hello. Thank you for the 100. Hi, Chugs. It's been a while. I had my back surgery to strengthen my vertebrae that has cancer in it. It went okay. Good. In rehab now. Did have some setbacks, though. The last PET scan showed that the cancer is in a lymph node in my chest. So as soon as I get cleared from surgery, I'll be starting my next line of treatment to continue to fight the cancer. Happy to watch the stream today, and I hope you have a great stream. Survivor Girl, um, again, we love you. I'm, I'm happy to hear that the back surgery went okay. I'm sorry to hear that you've had some setbacks. So again, nothing but love and hugs. Uh, wishing you the absolute best. I'm glad that you're able to uh, kick back and relax and, and enjoy the stream today. Mwah. I'm very, very glad. Very, very glad to hear that. Um, also, Chug's Army, this is our uh, this is our drink today. Liddy would not be very happy, but we do have we do have a Celsius that we're enjoying today. Uh, but again, Survivor Girl, thanks for. Um, giving us that update and again uh hang in there hang in there sco thank you for the 100 bits hey chugs army happy hair down monday thank you sco i was homesick today so i played oni on ps2 if you get a chance play it i forgot how good it was sco i have never played oni and that's a game i remember seeing so many advertisements for uh but that's awesome that's a game i would definitely like to check out at some point that's the again between how great video games have been with whether it be backwards compatibility or um, now people like Nintendo using things like emulation for Nintendo Switch Online. I love that there's so much access to play a bunch of these games that either we really enjoyed when we were younger or never had the chance to play. And Oni is one that I really, really do want to try at some point. Uh, God, I was just talking to Fresh about this and I was talking to a, a bunch of friends of mine and also we were talking about it. It is crazy how many excellent games continue to come out. Like, as a gamer, it's an amazing problem to have, but it's also sad knowing there's no way uh, you're going to be able to play every game that you want to. And it's just so wild. We'll try, though. We will try on this channel because, like we said, this stream is going nowhere. I'm going to do this until I can't do it anymore. Also, Chugs Army, thank you very, very much for the level 4 hype train. Mwah. Thank you, thank you. Very much appreciated. Happy Monday. Happy start to the week. Silver, thank you for the 100. Hola, Chugs. I'm beyond ready for more Silent Hill content. Me too. As much as I love Resident Evil, that series will always be my number one for survival horror. 
yeah, Silent Hill is... I'm, I'm really excited. Especially because many people regard Silent Hill 2 as like their favorite survival horror game of all time. And I've never truly played it. So I'm really, really pumped for that. Um, and Silent Hill 1, of course. Really hoping the remake of 2 will revive it fully. I hope so too. I'm so excited. I have no idea when that game's going to come out. But we will definitely be streaming that for sure. And we all know that if you ever made a game... Um, you would just use it to turn yourself into Handsome Jack. Probably. Probably, right? <laughs> Silver, thank you again, man. Uh, uh, Roberto, thank you for five months at Tier 1. Chugs Army, happy Monday. Great to be a part of this family now for five months, and I'm ready to enjoy another great stream. Thank you, Roberto. Thank you very much. It's great to have you here. Also, thank you for the follows. Once again, everybody, welcome to stream 712. This is part six, potentially the finale of Resident Evil Revelations, the fifth game in our five-game cycle, and potentially game number 54 that we beat today, which would be very exciting. But also, we have something we have to continue. And that is story time with Professor Chugs. Uh, Red Wings fan, yes, when I was younger, I did play Moonwalker, but only a handful of times. So I have very little experience with that game, but I know that's a lot of people's, one of their favorite Sega games. Um, but once again, Chugs Army, we are going through the video games textbook, my personal favorite book on the history, the business, the industry of video games themselves. Um, so very, very excited to continue this today. Once again, we started a little bit yesterday with the sixth generation and the Sega Dreamcast. We're on the <clears throat> sixth generation generation of video game consoles. We went through the arcade decline and resurrection um, in the 6th gen, and then we started once again on the Sega Dreamcast. Um, and we have quite a bit to read today, um, but I will I will try to get through it. I will try to get through it. So we went over what the launch price was, and here we go. It was up to Sega of America president Bernie Stoller and his team to ensure a more successful U.S. launch. They did a lot of good, such as repairing relationships with American retailers and securing a better lineup of games. While the Japanese debut only had four launch titles, a record-breaking 19 titles were available for the U.S. release, including a long-awaited Sonic game. The American console maintained the look of the Japanese system, focusing more on the name Dreamcast than Sega. Other clever marketing included the memorable U.S. launch date, 9999, and lower retail price <clears throat> of 199. However, with all the cards lined up, an argument with Sega chairman Isayo Okawa led to Stoller's termination from the company just a month before the system's launch. Despite the abrupt loss of its president, Sega's U.S. Dreamcast debut was a success, with more pre-sales than Sony had with the PlayStation during its entrance into the market. Wow, that's big. The Dreamcast had a lot of things going for it when it was released. It was the most powerful home console at the time. It used its own CD-ROM format for its media, which cost about the same as CD-ROM to manufacture, but could hold up to 1.2 gigabytes of data. While CD-ROMs were easy to copy, the higher capacity of GD-ROMs, I'm so sorry, uh, a gigabyte disk. So uh, the Dreamcast used a GD-ROM, not a CD-ROM. While CD-ROMs were easy to copy, the higher capacity of GD-ROMs made Dreamcast games more difficult to pirate. The console also included four controller ports. The Dreamcast controller featured an analog stick, D-pad, and four action buttons, in addition to two touch-sensitive shoulder triggers. The center of the controller housed a slot for the 128-kilobyte VMU, or Visual Memory Unit, memory that contained both a small LCD screen as well as single-channel audio output. Since the console was not built with a reset button, players needed to reset games with the controller by pressing the start button and the four face buttons, which is A, B, X, and Y simultaneously. That's an interesting reset. Another unique feature of the Dreamcast was that it included a built-in modem for connecting to the internet for online play. However, it wasn't until a full year after its North American release when the Dreamcast's internet gaming service, SegaNet, became available on September 7, 2000 under new Sega of America president Peter Moore. Most consumers at this time connected to the internet with a slow 56 kilobyte modem and a subscription to SegaNet cost $21.95 per month. That seems a little pricey. Still, Sega was able to obtain more than a million subscribers within its first month of service. 
Free one-year subscriptions were soon offered with the purchase of every new Dreamcast. Following a price drop to $149, Sega even offered a rebate for the full price of the system, where consumers could literally receive a free Dreamcast with purchase of an 18-month SegaNet subscription. Wow. And then here's a little did you know fact. Over 5,000 names were considered for the Dreamcast for its logo. In Japan and the US, the Dreamcast swirl is orange, but it had to be changed to blue in Europe due to a German company using the exact same logo. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. And actually, Chug's Army, there is two more paragraphs on the Sega Dreamcast. So let's finish up on the Dreamcast. Uh, and then next time we do story time with Chugs, which will be on Thursday, we'll do a console comparison of the Dreamcast and the fifth generation consoles. But to finish up on the Dreamcast. For peripherals, the Dreamcast received the typical arca arcade joystick variants, steering wheel, fishing controller for games like Sega Bass Fishing, and a keyboard and mouse for games like the Typing of the Dead Sega's VMU was much more than just a memory card. Its interactive LCD display allowed for each player to have their own private screen, which could be used in new ways, such as for calling plays in NFL 2K. I loved the 2K games on Dreamcast. The controller slot for the VMU could also be used to insert a jump pack for force feedback. The slot was even used to plug in a microphone that was required for the bizarre Seaman title, narrated by Leonard Nimoy in the English language version. The game involved caring for and talking to virtual fish-like creatures with human faces who also spoke. That game was so wild. So, so wild. And then one more paragraph. Possibly, uh, <clears throat> possibly due to the Columbine High School massacre, Sega never released a light gun in the United States. However, third-party manufacturer Mad Cats did release their Dream Blaster light gun for the system. Sega's Dream Eye was a digital camera accessory that could be connected to the system for exchanging pictures or used like a webcam for video chat. Perhaps the most unique accessories for the system were a pair of maracas that gamers would actually shake to the music of Samba de Amigo. Finally, the VGA box adapter allowed the Dreamcast to output progressive scan or 480p on capable displays. So that was uh, the little introductory information on the Sega Dreamcast. And then, like I said, on Thursday, when we return to story time with Chugs, we will do a console comparison between the Dreamcast and then all the fifth generation, the previous video game consoles. So that, that was story time with Chugs today, Chugs Army. Um, and before we get into song of the day, um, let me catch up here for a second. Uh, Ginny, thank you very much for the 100 bits. If you ever made a game, it would have to, it would have top tier tunes. It would have to. It would have to, Ginny. <laughs> thank you, Ginny. Happy Monday. Shadow Next Gen, thank you for 41 months at tier one. Day one, Chugs crew checking in. Shadow, thank you so much. I hope you're doing awesome. It's Des, thank you for the 100. Have you seen Octopath Traveler 2? I think it should be a Game of the Year nominee. It's a masterpiece of an RPG from Square Enix. Man, so I loved Octopath Traveler 1, and I heard 2 was even better. I have not had the chance to play it yet, and I've been meaning to download it. I keep going back and forth on if I want to... Like, for example, I have Blasphemous 1 on my Switch, but I decided to download Blasphemous 2 on my Steam Deck. I have Octopath Traveler 1 on my Switch, and I keep going back and forth on if I want to play it on Switch or if I want to play it on Steam Deck. But it, no matter what... Octopath Traveler 2 is definitely a game I want to play. I'm glad you enjoyed it so much. Lady, thank you for the 400 bits. Oh, got to show some love for a Monday. Thank you, Lady. Kristen, thank you for the 200 bits. I have a job for you today. Um, oh, Kristen, hey. Let's get some hype in the chat, Kristen. Kristen, just be yourself. You got this. I believe in you. The Chugs Army believes in you. You got this. You got this, Kristen. Good luck. Uh, Warrior, thank you for 24 months. The two years... The Rainbow Mushroom Club at Tier 1. Thank you, Warrior. Thank you, thank you. Um, so, before we open up the chat, and before we get into potentially the finale, potentially the finale of Resident Evil Revelations, and maybe game number 54 that we beat on this Monday, which would be amazing, considering we unfortunately are not going to be able to stream Tuesday um, or Wednesday. However, Chug's Army, we will once again this week. Here's, here's something to be pumped about. So again, can't stream Tuesday, can't stream Wednesday, but we will be able to stream 
Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Another five days in a row. We'll start at the beginning of our five-game cycle on Thursday with the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, but we will be able to stream five days in a row once again, and I am so pumped about it. So, so pumped about it. Jay, thank you for three months at Tier 1. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, Jay. Um, anyway, song of the day. Um, speaking of amazing music, and we played this before, but um, one of the most emotionally charged video games I have ever played, and one of my favorite independent games, one of my favorite um, soundtracks in games is from Ori. So whether that be Ori and the Blind Forest or Ori and the Will of the Wisps, uh, Gareth Coker is unbelievable. The, the music he makes for these games are some of my favorites. I have the entire, both soundtracks downloaded on my phone, um, and I listen to them often. And one of my favorite songs uh, in Ori and the Blind Forest is Escaping the Runes, uh, or Escaping the Ruins. And I just absolutely love this song. It's a combination of it, like, makes me feel emotional, but also, like, really, really hypes me up. Um, this song is just so beautiful. So I don't know if we're going to get an ad. I feel like we probably will, but we'll see. Anyway, this is from Ori and the Blind Forest. Gareth Coker is a genius, and this is Escaping the Ruins. So here we go. Another BK ad. We got another BK ad, Chugs Army. Oh, a double ad. A double ad. Ad wins. Ad, two of them. Two of them on this on this hair down Monday. Anyway, here we go. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> the song of the day is not BK Have It Your Way. I promise. I promise. The song of the day is from Uri and the Blind Forest. This is Escaping the Ruins. Here we go. This song is beautiful. The buildup is so good. So you're here and you're like, I'm just going to let it play. I'm just going to let it play. Normally I would fast forward. But you're like, hmm, what's going to happen? And then all of a sudden, you realize all this chaos around you is about to happen. When it comes in here, it's so good. There's something about this song that, and the vocals in the background. Part. And you're running for I get chills every time. You can't see, but I every time I get goosebumps in this this part right here. Why that I stopped myself. I immediately felt my eyes get watery, but I stopped myself. Okay, okay, that is song of the day. For some reason, that chord. Yeah. This. That do, 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 do destroys me. I feel it. I feel like I, I immediately, the second I hear that, my eyes start to get watery every time it never fails but it's a beautiful song beautiful beautiful song um also let me open up the chat it has been 30 minutes uh so once again the first 30 minutes or so of every stream as a very small thank you to the subs of this channel i have it on sub only mode uh but once again welcome in everybody welcome to stream 712 happy hair down monday happy start to the week and today is part six of resident evil revelations and potentially the finale uh but once again our story time with Chugs, we finished up on the Sega Dreamcast in the sixth generation. Next time, we'll do a console comparison. We just had Song of the Day, which was from Ori and the Blind Forest, Escaping the Ruins. Beautiful song. Beautiful song. Our drink of the day is a Celsius today and Chugs Army. Who is ready? Who 
is ready for. Resident Evil Revelations. <laughs> anyway, okay. Also, Chug's Army, before we get started, gotta show shirt of the day. Gotta show shirt of the day. Let me just get this loaded in and then I'll and then I'll turn my TV on. But shirt of the day, again, I love this shirt. This is one of my favorite gaming shirts based on all the stuff on it. Gotta move the hair out of the way for a second. But this is the actually the first shirt that I ever wore on stream. And it has all these amazing controllers on it, including the Sega Dreamcast controller. Which, right there, right there. But absolutely love this, sh oh shoot, this shirt. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. Okay, yep, I bumped the cord. I bumped the cord. Let's see if I can fix it. Oh no. Look, it's just, it's just stuck on the shirt. It's just shirt of the day. It's just shirt of the day. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, Chug's Army, this is such a bummer. I may, I, I may have to quickly go offline and then come right back. Because... It is not even recognizing it now. It doesn't even see it. Okay, Chug's Army, I'm so sorry to do this. I am so sorry to do this. Give me, I swear, 30 seconds. Even less than that. I'll be right back. I'll be very, very quick. Uh, Script Warrior, you can't, unfortunately. You can't. Uh, with the way OBS is. I'll be right back. I'll be very, very quick. I promise. I promise. I'll be right back. So 